I feel like we say this every expansion. This is gonna be the biggest change to Destiny ever. But after getting all the news that we got this past week, from build crafting evolved to the TWAB, how you play this game and how you get through in-game content is gonna be more customizable to your playstyle than ever before. Today, guys, I actually wanted to focus on champions, barrier, overload, and unstoppable, and more specifically, the things that are going to counter each one of those champions. And as you get deeper into in-game content, champions, they're just a part of our lives. You either find ways to stun them or have enough damage to overwhelm them. But in Master and Grandmaster content, that's a difficult thing to do. Now, barrier champions can actually be stunned by volatile rounds. And while a player is radiant, those attacks can actually pierce champion shields and stun them. Strand will also have a method of piercing barriers. Overload champions can actually be stunned by jolt, which makes logical sense. And likewise, you can also suppress overload champions to stun them, as well as slowing them with stasis. And unstoppable champions can literally be stunned by being blinded. That means things like blinding grenades, flashbang, seismic strike, disorienting blow. All of these things can stun an unstoppable champion. And encasing them in stasis and then shattering it can stun them as well as solar ignitions. And we have weapons that actually apply scorch. Look no further than Skyburner's Oath. Now, Stram will also include an unstoppable counter. Now, the reason why this is such a big deal is that this is dipping into weapons, both exotic and legendaries, as well as subclass abilities. And today, guys, we're going to go through a list of weapons that I really want you to look out for. Now, first for a breakdown, again, barrier champions to counter them, radiant, volatile, strand, overload champions, jolt, suppression, and slow, and unstoppable champions, blind, stasis, shatter, solar ignition, as well as strand. Now, I do want to mention, there's a number of exotics that already have intrinsically ways to counter these champions. So for barrier, think things like revision zero, which we recently just got. We're going to be damage testing here soon again, comparing it to all our different primary weapons. But you also have like Wishinder, Arbalus, Ariana's Vow, Lament, all great counters. However, one of the best weapons that's actually going to be able to double dip into these champion stuns is Collective Obligation. Guys, if there's one weapon you need to get this season, it's this exotic right here. We've made reviews and a number of different builds with it. The beautiful thing about Collective Obligation is that the weapon leeches void debuffs when damaging targets that are either suppressed, weakened, or volatile. It's really easy to charge this weapon, and then the alternate weapon action will swap its firing mode, increasing the damage, but also applying the same void debuffs that were just leeched. Now, the beautiful thing about this is not only can you synergize it with volatile and stun barrier champions, but the suppression can also stun overload champions. No lie, guys, collective obligation is actually very, very good in PvE and inside of PvP. It's one of my favorite weapons. We've used it in Grandmaster Nightfalls, combine it with things like Girth Falcons, and you have crazy synergy. Now, anything void that can apply volatile will obviously work against barrier champions. Things like Funnel Web, Hollow Denial, etc. But the one that I really want you to get this season, guys, is the Velus X. We've actually made a review on this pulse rifle. It is one of the best pulse rifles you can get. It's a static roll weapon. It has repulsor brace and golden tricorn. It synergizes with things like Girth Falcons beautifully with the constant volatile being applied. You're gaining overshields. I'm using it this season even inside of Grandmaster Nightfalls. Very, very good pulse rifle. Again, the ritual weapon, so it's easily obtainable. And starting next season, you'll be able to counter barrier champions without the use of artifact mods. Now for overloads. Now I was actually going to save this for our Icolos review, and I know we're kind of late to the party, but Jolt is going to be the best counter probably to overload champions simply because it's so easy to proc and look no further than the Ikelos SMG. Now the Ikelos SMG isn't the only weapon with Volt Shot, although Ikelos is so good with Volt Shot. It's like a mini wrist runner without requiring that self proc. But you also have things like Tarnished Metal, Cell Spy Pitch Glass, Brigand's Law, Path of Least Resistance, Posterity, lots of great options guys. And again, we haven't even gotten to subclasses yet. Now considering that it was also mentioned that simply slowing an overload champion can stun them, Fellas, Chill Clip just became an S tier trait, which look no further, fellas, than Riptide. Riptide has the ability to roll with Chill Clip, and you can do a number of different combinations. You can do like Field Prep, Chill Clip, or even Feeding Frenzy Chill Clip, or Compulsive Reloader with Chill Clip. Lots of great options here, guys. But the beautiful thing about Riptide is that it's going to be able to do a variety of things. Not only are you going to be able to run in there and slow and stun an overload champion, but if you actually slow and then freeze and shatter an unstoppable champion, that too will stun them. And that just requires two shots. Now, keep in mind, Riptide is not the only fusion rifle that comes with Chill Clip. You also have Deliverance. This is the Vow the Disciple fusion rifle. So it's actually craftable and you can get Enhanced Compulsive Reloader, which grants greatly increased reload speed when close to full magazine. But you've got a ton of other good options, guys, including Fire and Forget with Chill Clip, Bump in the Night, Palmyra, the Grenade Launcher Lingering Dread. This is one I actually kept on my own account. It's a Chill Clip roll. The only thing I'm wondering, what if I had a Blinding Grenade? 
grenade, chill clip roll. I can stun champions even with the initial blind, slow them, and freeze them. So you can see where something like Lingering Dread would be perfect for this. Unfortunately, my roll here was an old one and came with concussion grenades. Now, some other weapons that you'll be able to utilize against Overload Champions include Tractor Cannon, which can suppress. Delicate Tomb. We've actually made a number of different builds with this fusion rifle. The reason why it's so good is when you collect an Onyx Trace, it overcharges the weapons next shot and actually jolts targets on hits. Very good fusion rifle for PvE, guys, especially when you combine it with things like Sunstar. Highly advise getting it. Wave Splitter. A lot of people don't know, guys. Wave Splitter actually has a suppression feature. But after you collect an orb, you gain that maximum power and sustain fire in this mode does suppress targets. We also have Agger Scepter. Now, again, similar to Collective Obligation, Aggers will be able to go back and forth between Unstoppable Champions and Overload Champions as it slows and freezes. And the beautiful thing about this weapon is, again, even when you land kills on surrounding targets, final blows of this weapon slows nearby targets. And then you got the Exotic Catalyst, which amps up the damage substantially. Still wasn't worth 34 runs, though. Another weapon that people are probably not going to use, but we are going to throw it on the list, is Darcy. Darcy got an update this past season where its target acquired trait applies jolt to a target when personal assistant is active. We tested the damage out, and it's not the best. I still feel like they just need to move it to the special slot, but regardless, though, yes, it's another way to counter overload champions. And then, of course, we do have our intrinsic weapons, things like Love and Narc, which can counter overload champions, Divinity, and even Thunderlord. Now, moving on to Unstoppable. Again, like we listed above, pretty much anything with Chill Clip, you just have to land multiple shots. Agger Scepter, of course, after you get the slow freeze and then shatter. And hopefully, Blinding Grenades on GLs. Now, Bundy did say that they updated Blinding Grenades to use the Blind Effect, but our testing shows that the Blind applied to targets does not synergize with things like Spark of Brilliance. Granted, if you know something about this, leave a comment. But there's a lot of different grenade launchers that can roll with Blinding Grenades, whether that's Ignition Code, Lingering Dread, the new Dungeon Legendary Grenade Launcher, Water Flight. Lots of great options, but again, we just got to see if it synergizes. Now, weapons that you might not have even remembered are things like Crowstesia. Yes, this little sidearm is going to be positioned very nicely next season, as you can actually load a charge shot that instantly freezes targets, and even indirect shots could still freeze. So I'm sure this could probably even work against Overload Champions, but we'll see how that plays out. Also, things like Salvation's Grip. Now, I don't think anyone's going to be jumping up to use Salvation's Grip, but in terms of getting that encasing and Stasis Shatter, Salvation's Grip is set for it. Now, weapons that actually apply Scorch are things like Skyburner's Oath and Yoden. Keep in mind, though, guys, the Skyburner's Oath, it takes a lot of shots to reach that ignition. You really do want to pair it with your subclass abilities. But yes, these weapons will have the ability to stun Unstoppable Champions, considering it has Incandescent through its Exotic Catalyst. Now, Grand Overture. We've recently done a lot of damage comparisons between Grand Overture and other weapons. It's phenomenal, and I don't think it's going to be getting a nerf anytime soon. But things like Grand Overture and its Volley, which just got a substantial buff to its damage, will blind enemies. So, of course, this should stun Unstoppable Champs. Now, are things that actually has Unstoppable intrinsically, you've got Malfeasance, you've got Devil's Ruin, and Leviathan's Breath. All great options here. Now, I do want to talk about weapons that are getting the 3.0 synergy in Lifefall. This was actually confirmed by Chris Proctor in the last dev interview, and that includes Ruinous Effigy, Leviathan's Breath, 1000 Voices, Sunshot, Polaris Lance, Two-Tail Fox, Prometheus Lens, and Queen Breaker's Bow. Now, note that Prometheus Lens and Queen's Breaker already have 3.0 synergy, but Chris mentioned them anyway. Queen Breaker doesn't have a catalyst, so maybe in the future we're actually going to get more synergy here. But the main takeaway is that things like 1000 Voices will be applying Scorch, Sunshine as well, Ruinous Effigy with things like Volatile, Two Tail Fox, which is going to be doing like a combination of the two. And of course, Two Tail Fox suppresses. So technically, you could counter Overload Champions with Two Tail Fox. But all of these are actually going to be getting that 3.0 synergy, meaning more lethality across the board. Now, I want to talk about best armors, most notably our exotic armors. For barrier champions, guys, Bombardiers, which Bombardiers is a really weird one because depending on the subclass you're rocking, on Arc, it blinds targets when you dodge next to them. On Solar, it scorches. On Void, it suppresses. And on Stasis, it slows, which pretty much covers every champion in the game. Bombardiers literally will be the counter to all of them. But against various champions, you have things like Calumet's Hand, Girl Falcon's Heartbreak, Don Chorus, the Titan Gauntlet's Second Chance, which that's intrinsic against barrier champions. And then when we actually look at at overloads, you've got Icefall Mantle. I know, that's crazy, right? When you actually cast your Glacial Guard, it slows combatants within 7 meters of you. You also have Seeking Filaments, but that is intrinsic. And for Unstoppables, you have Horfrost. Now, the reason why we're talking about Horfrost is you can literally encase an Unstoppable Champion with Horfrost's ability. You also have Arthur's Embrace, which is intrinsically able to counter Unstops. But then we have good questions like, what about Gemini Jesters? Is that considered a blind effect of sorts? And what if you pop a bubble with Helm of Saint-14? and an unstoppable champion enters your bubble. Again, great 
questions? I'm assuming yes, but we'll have to test and see. Now, subclass abilities that will be able to counter these champions directly. For Barry, you have Ember of Torches, Ember of Combustion, Well of Radiance, Acrobat's Dodge, Lightweight Knife, which requires precision hits, Controlled Demolition, Echo of Instability, Pocket Singularity. All these things will be able to counter barrier champions. For Overload, you have Shield Bash, Suppression Grenade, Deadfall and Mobius Quiver, Spark of Shock or Touch of Thunder with Lightning Grenades, Lethal Current, Tempest Strike, Gathering Storm, Lightning Surge, Withering Blade, Silence and Squall, Dust Fill Grenades, which Dust Fills can go back and forth for Unstops and Overload, Winter Shroud, How the Storm, Bleak Watchers, and for an Unstoppable, you have Gunpowder Gamble, Spark of Brilliance, Spark of Beacons, Flashbang Grenades, Seismic Strike, Disorienting Blow, Dead Shots, pretty much all Stasis Grenades, Silence and Squall, Shatter Die, Cryoclasm, Howl of the Storm, Diamond Lance, Glacial Quake, Penumbral Blast, Winter's Wrath, Bleak Watcher, granted it does take a while, but it does freeze, Frost Pulse, and Ice Flare Bolts. If there's anything you could take away from all this, guys, there's gonna be literally so many ways outside of our artifact mods to counter champions. Now, I do wanna talk about elemental objects. Currently, we know Bungie is introducing more elemental objects to the game, but we really don't know how these are gonna synergize with our subclasses. Ionic Traces for Arc, Fire Sprite for Solar, Void Breaches for Void, and Stasis Shards will continue being used for Stasis. And Strand will also have an object we will share more details on in the future. Now, we already know that Ionic Traces increases ability regeneration and can make you amplify. And Stasis Shards grants things like ability regeneration and even overshields depending on your fragments. We also have a new fragment called Ember of Mercy, which was mentioned to give Hunters restoration, but that doesn't have any effect on champions. Now, maybe the other elements will actually dip into that, but currently, these systems seem to be separate. Now, I just want to bring those up as I don't look at things like Fire Sprite or even Void Breaches as ways to directly counter champions, but instead synergize similar to things like Ionic Trace, but probably activate, say, more Ignitions with less Scorch Stacks or some sort of volatile buildup. Or considering how Elemental Wells are and the ability regeneration you get from those wells, it could just be tied directly to that. Regardless though, guys, these are the weapons that I highly suggest getting. Pretty sure most of you already have these, but down below next to the timestamps of all of these, we'll have a dash and where you can actually get each one of these weapons. So good luck. And if there's anything you could take away from this video, just know Bungie is going full fledged into allowing us to bring our most customizable build into in-game content. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.